10 cards in 10 minutes, you bet, set your timer and you can do it too. I've got 10 cards to share with you that we're gonna make in 10 minutes. So hang with me. All right, so here we go. Let's get right into number one, a custom inked background. So I am just gonna take an ink pad. This is from Katherine Pooler. I will link all the supplies that I'm using below in the YouTube description. So I'm just taking the pad and just swiping it along the background there. You can see I actually got a little heavy handed with some of the pads. So you can see that oval ink outline, that ink pad outline. Have no fear, you won't even notice it when we're done. Then I'm gonna take a floral image. I'm gonna stamp it with some purple ink, also from Katherine Pooler. I am using my Misty stamping tool so I can get really good coverage. So I'm able to give it, you know, stamp it three times to make sure that it's nice and dark and pretty. And then I'll go ahead and ink up a sentiment, also using the Misty so I don't ink it up crooked like I'm known to do. And what a bang, what a boom, check it out. Boom, one card down. I flicked on a little bit of water and that's where there's water's droplets came from. And I told you, you can't see those oval shapes in the background, no more. All right, number two, messy watercoloring. You really need no artistic skill for this. This is a piece of watercolored cardstock. I sprayed it with regular water and I'm going in and just dabbing on different colors of watercolor. This is from the Altenew 36 pan watercolors set. Any watercolors you have would work. If you have watercolor markers, you could do it with that. Uh, watercolor Crayolas, you know, the Arteza water brush pens, whatever you've got, I say use it. Just throw some color on there. And because you added water to the background before you added the watercolor, the water basically is going to do all of the blending for you. You may need to give it a little help here and there, but for the most part, the water makes it super easy because as I'm putting it down, you can see it's already dripping all over my paper. So it's important if you are going to do any kind of water coloring, no matter what, make sure you're using some kind of water colored cardstock. There's lots on the market. I'll link to the ones that I use below in the description. Uh, if you find that helpful. So once I got it good and dry, I'm just gonna take a background stamp. This is, or a, not a background stamp. This is from a stamp set. I think this is from, I don't know. I think it's the ton. Again, I'm linking everything below in the description for you. Using my fellow uh, handy Misty, uh, just to make sure all my placement is good. You can use an acrylic block if you want to. I just mess up all the time and I stamp crooked and uh, I, God love my Misty. And you can also, you know, if you want to speed things up, you can use an ink pad, of course. But I'm taking the same watercolors and just putting it on, I'm painting it onto the stamp. Maybe I'm using different colors, but I'm using the same watercolor palette, which is what I meant to say. Uh, but to speed things up even along further, you can just use an ink pad. But I love the look that this gives behind. Looks like I kind of like hand painted this and I totally didn't. No one will know that but you. All right, I'm telling you. So here you go. That is done and done and done. And it's cute and I like it. And we did that super duper easy. All right, let's move on to the next one, number three, which is scoring. If you have a scoreboard of some sort, uh, this is the Martha Stewart scoreboard. Uh, what other uh, score pal has a scoreboard there's scoreboards everywhere but you can probably use the line of your paper trimmer as well some kind of stylus or bone folder and I just scored some lines in there and then I stamped the sentiment and this card is done like I'm not kidding <laughs> you can go in and write something else if you want to uh, I did take the gold ink pad and just kind of swipe it gently over the scored lines because the scored lines are raised so it was able to pick up the gold and that's how I created this card Bada bang, bada boom. We're just moving right along here. Number four is heat embossing. I love heat embossing. I'm taking a background stamp. I think this is from Penny Black and I'm inking it up with some wow embossing ink. Gotta use my Misty. <laughs> Plus I'm making all these cards in 10 minutes since it was easy just to have my Misty out for all of the cards. So I inked that up with some Versamark ink, which is a sticky ink and it's uh, used for heat embossing and watermarking. So all of the embossing powder that I am applying is going to stick to where the Versamar or the uh, embossing ink was. So I like the Wow embossing ink because it's slower drying, so I'm able, I don't have to rush. I find when I rush, I mess up. So I sprinkled on some embossing powder from Wow and then I'm drying it with my heat tool, also from Wow. I am stamping a sentiment. Look, see, there's my acrylic block. I do have them, see, see, see? And you know, bada bang, what do you think? You know, most of these cards I am adhering to panels. I did that off camera, 
but uh, you know, seriously, paper tearing. We're down up to number five. We're halfway through number five, paper tearing. This is a piece of uh, copy paper from my copy machine that's right next to me. You can use trash, you can use mail, whatever. I'm just tearing it. Then I'm going to kind of secure it in place with some tape. And then I'm going to, and it's basically acting as a mask without the masking paper or without having to do any fine cuts when you're masking image. This is just going to create a really fun border. So I've got those papers just kind of secured in place. I've got some cardstock underneath that. I am taking a stamp and pressing it onto my uh, cardstock. See, I'm, I'm moving fast, so I didn't even get my Misty for this one. And check it out. I, I always clean my stamps as I go because if I don't, the ink, the ink dries on my stamps and then it gets all over the place, all over my hands, and then that transfers to my card and then I get mad at myself. So I clean as I go. So, uh, but look at that, look at that. So I took that beautiful background stamp and just with some torn paper, created that, right? And then again, taking a sentiment and then I'll just stamp it on there. And then bada bang, bada boom, we are done with card number five. Like for reals. Easy peasy pumpkin cheesy. That's not really a word, but here's a look at this card. Thanks so much. All right, let's move on to number six ink blending. Love ink blending. It's been around for ages. So easy to do. This is some Aqua Teeny ink from Catherine Pooler. That blender brush is from the stamp market, but I got my um my pack of blender brushes off of Amazon eons ago. Those work too. My daughter just keeps taking taking them. <laughs> Uh, so you certainly can use those and I'll link to a video right here uh, that talks to you about those very inexpensive blending brushes that I got off of Amazon. They come in all different sizes. So Aquatini, let's see, what am I doing now? I don't know. I'm moving on. We've got some sea foam on here. I just take whatever your favorite color inks are and just blend them onto a piece of white cardstock. I am using a, a piece of cloth there to kind of keep the ink from transferring to my fingers. I got a smudge on the on the top right corner there, as you can see. I'm just going to trim that off. I'm not stopping. I'm on a time limit here, don't you know? So don't worry about that. If it's on the edge or anything like that, you can trim it off. If you happen to get a smudge on the middle of your cardstock, you can probably cover that up with a sentiment panel. Just stamp a sentiment, cut it, and pop it up, or just tape it down right over any smudges you have. There's ways. There's ways, right? And again, got my Misty. I'm kind of positioning where I want that beautiful floral cluster and sentiment to go. Then I'll close the Misty door. As long as my paper is in place and in that left-hand corner, it will stamp in the same place every single time. And then I'm going to ink this up with the same color ink I used. I used the Aquatini and then a black for the sentiment. And I'll go ahead and get all that stamped at one time because of the Misty. And then this card is done. That was number six, you guys. Moving right along. Here's a little close-up. So you can do whatever you want. You can keep it simple with ink blending or you can do a whole bunch of colors or you can do two like I did. Ink swiping, one of my favorites. Take an ink pad, swipe it down. I mean, seriously. <laughs> I love doing this. It's just so much fun. If you have many ink pads, they're really fun because you can do a whole bunch of swipes because the pads are so tiny. But uh, anyway, I'm telling you, ink swiping. God, how many cards could you get done just by swiping? Like we should have a contest, like 60 seconds, ink swipe, go, and see how many backgrounds you can get done. But anyway, this card's pretty, pretty quick. Done and done. And then if you pre-make your sentiments, I do have a lot of pre-made sentiments that I keep in a coffee cup. Uh, gosh, think how much faster this would go along. I just would glue the sentiments down. Now I'm putting eight, nine together because we're stenciling, but we're doing it two different ways, but we're doing it with the same stencil. So at first I've got a stencil there. I've got two different colors of ink. Also again from Catherine Pooler, blending brush. I'm blending on just with one color and I didn't do the entire image. I just focused on the center point. Now I've repositioned the stencil. I'm going in and going in with two different colors and I'm only partially blending it on the corner. And then by doing that, I get two different looks, but with the same stencil, right? Easy. How many stencils do you have in your stash? You can do this with countless. And then just find a sentiment that works for you. Pop a sentiment up to whatever floats your boat. Heat embosses sentiment. Uh, but because we're in a time crunch, I'm doing all my sentiments just very simple, just by stamping them in place. Oh, I 
stand corrected. I heat embossed this. So I stamped it with VersaFine Claire, but because my background was kind of dark in the center, I didn't think the, the ink stood out enough, so I heat embossed it. So there you go. So I did that for one card. I made an exception. <laughs> so here is these cards, number eight and nine, stenciling two ways, partial stenciling uh, with multiple inks, single ink, whatever floats your boat, easy peasy. And now we're on for number 10, which unfortunately my camera clunked out, but that's okay. This is going to be so easy. You don't need to see it on film. Take a marker, draw some lines. Seriously, take a marker, grab a ruler. I drew black lines going in one direction, pink lines going in another direction with some Sharpie markers. And then I took a stamp and stamped it right over the top. Here's another variation of it. That's it for reals. Markers, people. Uh, so that's it. 10 cards in 10 minutes. I did it. We did it. If you uh, love this video, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know which card or technique or whatever was your favorite. All these can be mass produced because they're so easy, but 10 cards in 10 minutes. Card making does not have to take you all day long. I promise. I promise. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so thanks so much for watching. Here's a couple other videos you might want to take a look at. If you've got any videos you want me to do showcase on my channel, let me know in the comments. I want to make what you want to see. You know what I'm saying? Thanks for watching.